What do circuit breakers, toggle switches, smartphone charging ports, headset jacks, and starter switches in your home-built aircraft have in common? They all need medium-sized holes to be drilled in your panel to mount them. What is the best tool to accomplish this job? The step drilled, also called a unibit, but unibit is a trademark name. The step drill is a must-have in the home builder's toolbox. Available from your hardware store or online from the likes of Amazon or Harbor Freight, this drill bit is indispensable for drilling holes of all sizes in typically thin materials like your instrument panel. Looking at the step drill, we see that they are available in many sizes. That's why my toolbox has four of them to cover any size hole I need to make. It is unique in that each hole size is just a step away from making the next larger one, and you stop drilling when your hole is big enough. It's like having a dozen regular drill bits in one, much more convenient than a punch or hole saw. The main advantage over conventional drill bits is that they have a straight cutting lip and flute, not spiral, so thin and flexible materials such as sheet metal and plastic won't be twisted out of shape when the drill bit drives through them. I always recommend first drilling a small pilot hole before using the step drill to make sure the whole center is precisely located. Here is an example of a kit of three step drills that I had obtained from Amazon for about $12. Can you imagine what a conventional drill bit of all of these sizes would cost? This larger one, useful for the big holes needed for things like charging sockets, costs about $9. Step drills make it easy to quickly deburr the hole after drilling. All you need to do is run the bit for less than a second on the next larger cutting step, both sides of the hole. In other words, just a brief touch of the next larger size will clean the hole of the edge burrs. Aside from mounting switches and circuit breakers, Another popular reason for creating holes of these sizes is to provide passageways through bulkheads and wing ribs and other structures for wires, cables, fuel lines, and the like. The size of the hole can be tailored to match your needs. Of course, we cannot have our critical cables and tubes subject to the sharp edges of a hole so we must choose a suitable means of protection. There are two popular choices, the rubber grommet and the nylon bushing. Rubber grommets are inexpensive and come in a variety of sizes. The two important dimensions to consider when selecting a grommet is the size hole that is needed to be drilled in your panel to accept the grommet and the size of the hole in the center of the grommet, which becomes your usable space. What type of grommets to use? You can purchase AN 931 grommets from your aircraft supply store, which means these grommets conform to a military spec for size and that their material is resistant to hot oil and coolant. Or, if you are not using these in an area subject to fluids, many builders use the garden variety available at auto and electrical supply stores. They can be purchased in a box of a wide range of sizes for a very modest price. 
for the harshest environments, I use silicone grommets, which resist heat better than any other available at industrial supply firms like McMaster.com. Keep in mind that grommets are made from rubber and all rubber breaks down over time at a rate modified by environmental conditions. One line of thinking is we should minimize the use of rubber in our aircraft where it is really not needed at every opportunity. And this is where the nylon bushing comes into our discussion. These are common snap bushings. They literally snap into their hole with two tabs on either side for a locking fit. They can be removed by re-squeezing their tabs. Like their cousins, the grommets, they are available in many sizes that suit our typical needs for passing cables and wires through bulkheads. One difference is that in some cases they are deeper in size than a grommet if space is an issue. But generally speaking, I prefer snap bushings over grommets due to their longer lives and no rubber deterioration. Sometimes the holes we need to pass wires and fuel lines through are much larger than what we would make with a step drill. An example is a lightning hole in ribs and bulkheads. We need adequate protection from sharp edges and we do not have a grommet or bushing large enough to assist us. To the rescue, the flexible grommet. This is a component made of nylon or other material that allows us to custom cover any edge within the thickness limits of the grommet. It is available in various sizes to address whatever edge thickness you want to cover. The grommet I am demonstrating was made for about 25 thou to about 36 thousandths, which matches most of the edges in many metal aircraft. It cannot be beat for covering large holes, irregular shaped holes, or just any edge that needs to be covered to protect passing wires and cables. There is an expensive version available from most aircraft supply stores. It has a metal spring foundation covered with a flexible coating. It grips without any needs for glues, but it does cost about $7 per foot. This version is also approved in certified aircraft. The nylon flexible grommet shown here is about 40 cents a foot and it is common to apply some dabs of glue to hold it in place. At such an attractive price you may find yourself using it a lot and that's a good thing. I did not, however, find it available at aircraft supply stores, but rather at electronic suppliers like DigiKey and lots of choices at Amazon.com. In summary, to prevent abrasion to our critical wires and fuel lines from the movement and vibrations inherent in our aircraft, use any of the available grommet choices we have at our disposal. They are cheap insurance against future dangerous problems.